My name is Wayne Fleming, and I'm headed to the National Rescue Mission uh, Mission today, and I'm representing an organization called uh, Promise Keepers, which is a national men's Christian organization, which equips men to be strong spiritual leaders in their home, churches, and communities. I'm here for a project, and I'm assisted by my brother Tim Woods with Woods Films. Uh, the, the, the main goal of the project is to get a, a better perception of how the homeless and those who are poor uh, really view the church in terms of being uh, missionary-minded and catering to the needs of this population. So we're going to be interviewing uh, three men at the mission here. We're going to have some questions to ask them about uh, their perception of uh, uh, Christians and how they're treated by the body of Christ and also in terms of whether uh, they're reflecting the image of Christ himself. So uh, we're very excited about what's going to happen down here, Brother Tim and I, and uh, we're expecting God to move in a mighty way. So uh, we're pulling up now and getting ready to uh, accomplish this assignment. And we're here today at the Nashville Rescue Mission in Nashville, Tennessee. And we're going to be talking to several of the residents here about their perception of how the body of Christ or the church or Christians have been uh, involved in their lives in terms of helping them to find a new direction and a better quality of life. This is certainly a project I'm looking forward to. And hopefully out of this project, the body of Christ will get a better idea of how to address the needs of those who are homeless and those who are poor. Everything all right? Sure. Good. I'm Wayne Fleming. I just want to know what you said is Mark. Mark Magnum. Yeah. How, how has your uh, experience been down here? Do you feel like the church has been very responsive to your needs? Yes. You've been down here? Yes. Fantastic. And in, in, in what way would you say they, they felt that? Just my heart good. Does your heart good? Yeah. And uh, I assume you all have uh, church services here at the mission, right? Right. Different churches coming in and ministering and conducting Bible studies and things of that nature. Right. You feel like those those are, are beneficial. Yes. Okay. And uh, has the church been active in terms of uh, reentry and helping you get your life together once you live here? In terms of having a place to stay, yes. having a church family, and having those connections <coughs> that would give you a better quality of life. Yes. That's fantastic. Uh, my first guest we have here is Mr. A. 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 D. Landers. Is yes, that correct? Sir. Correct. All right. And how are you doing today, A.D.? I'm doing great. Fantastic. I'm going to be asking you a few questions, and I want you just to uh, ask these questions out of the sincerity of your heart. Yes, sir. Okay? Have you actually met with or been acquainted with any Christians yes, on your sir. lifetime? Yes, sir. Okay. And what was your response to them? How did they come across to you? Well, they came across to me today. They said, you'll never be alone. To turn your life over to God because God and Jesus is always going to be there for you. Okay, and did they even take it a step further in addressing uh, your needs? We're aware that you are here at the uh, rescue mission. Uh -huh. And so, how did they able to respond to your needs in terms of being homeless and some of the other needs that you might have? Yes, yes, uh, I'm from Cookville, and uh, when I was in Cookville, I went to the rescue mission up there. Everybody got together and they helped everybody in the place. And then I rededicated my I went to the altar and rededicated my life to God. Awesome. And asked him, forgive me of my sins. Amen. And I can, totally awesome. He healed my spirit. Yes. And then I started helping other brothers. All right. Explaining to God and Jesus to them. When they'd come in off the interstate, I was always a happy going because I'd already met my God. My, my, my. And then I try to help the other brothers uh -huh. explain it to them about the way they explain it to me. 
Okay. And AD, we know that Jesus Christ is all about uh, helping those who are downtrodden and downhearted and feel hopeless. Okay. Right. Do you feel like uh, the Christians in these days and times represented the character of Jesus Christ? Yes. Every Christian, true Christian I come across, explains herself in a, in a manner that really helps everyone that needs it. Okay. Nate, I want you to look right into that camera and tell me if you had the opportunity to speak to the church today, speak to all the Christians, uh -huh. what would you say to them? What, some, what message would you send to the body of Christ that would be beneficial in helping us address the needs of those who are homeless and helpless and downtrodden? My name is A.D. Landers, and I suggest that all the homeless and people that are needing Jesus and God, what they need to do is go to the altar, ask them for forgiveness, and dedicate their life to God and Jesus. Appreciate it, A.D. God bless you. Uh, so, Mr. Larry Combs, how are you doing today, sir? Everything going pretty good? Yes. Okay, I have a few questions I'd just like to ask you. Uh, have you met any Christians before? Yes. And what were your perception of the ones that you met? Were they responsive to your needs? They were responsive to our needs and our wants. They fed us real good. Uh, they were very caring and loving. Okay, anything else you want to say about that? Caring and loving in what fashion? How did they demonstrate uh, their love for you in terms of how Christ would be represented? They gave us a place to stay for the night. They gave us food to eat. Uh, there was times when some of the churches was able to get kind of laundry available. So that was very helpful. Fantastic. And in terms of what you know about Jesus Christ and the character that he displayed while he walked this earth, would you say that uh, Christians or the body of Christ represented that? That, yes. that you look like? Okay. I want you to look in that camera right now. If you had something very important or a key message to say to all Christians and the body of Christ today, what would you say? Don't close the churches to the homeless. We are humans. We're not animals. Treat us with respect that we deserve. Uh, my next guest here is Mr. Rogers Eddings. Mr. Eddings, how you doing today, oh, sir? Everything uh, working for you? Oh, yes. Okay, just want to ask you a few questions. Yes. Have you ever met any Christians before? Oh, yes. Okay, and what were your experience with those Christians? How, how did they treat you? Did they, did they represent Christ well? And uh, just talk to us about some of the experiences that you had with the body of Christ. You know, the churches, they uh, have open hearts, you know, uh, for the homeless. I mean, you know, they actually uh, show love and compassion for the needs of the home, you know, and uh, they also share the word, and that's very important, you know, and uh, whatever the need may be, they are there for them. And uh, I really thank God, you know, to have brothers and sisters that are in Christ, you know, and uh, just, just giving their all, you know, and that's very important. It is very important. I just thank you so much and allowed me to be a part of the Christian family of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks, Roger. And in, in terms of what you know about the character of Christ and the type of life that he lived while he was here, uh, do you think the body of Christ or Christians line up or represented what Christ lived while he was here? Would you say line up with it? Oh, yes. I mean, Christ is action. He wasn't someone to just sit back and just expect, you know, things to happen. It's about action, showing love, uh, reaching out, you know, and also uh, drawing a character. You know, as long as we have an open heart and ear to ear, he got our minds. My, my, my. You know, and that's a message. Praise God. Praise God. I have to give it all. My goodness. Come on now. Top of the line. <laughs> and Roger, I want you to look right into that camera right there. Yes. And if you had the opportunity, which you have it now, to send a message to all Christians or the body of Christ in terms of what they really 
need to hear from your perspective. What would that message be? That message would be just keep the faith and put God number one in your life and continue on reaching out for those that are in need. And that's the top of the line. God bless all. Thanks, Roger. Really appreciate it. You said in your word that birds of the air have nests and foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. We're so glad, Master, that you just didn't identify with those who are haughty and high-minded, but you lowered yourself and became a man that you could identify with our needs. Yes. I thank you, Lord God, for this time such as this with you, Master, knowing that you arranged this before the foundation of the world. Yes. And Lord, touch them in a special way. Fill their hearts with your Holy Spirit. Set them on the right path, Father, yes. the path that yes. you have planned for them. Give them food and shelter, Lord God, and those things in life that you know they need. Yes. But we realize nothing is too hard for our God, for with you all things are possible. Yes. And now, Lord, we thank you for being in your presence today. For you said in your word, Lord, that one day heaven and earth shall pass away, and we'll spend eternity with a loving and kind God, where there'll be no more crying, no more pain, yes. no more sorrow. Yes. So thank you for that inspiration today, Lord God. And we know that you're the one that we can depend on. For you said in your word, put not confidence in a man, but there's a friend that's this closer than a brother, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Now, Lord God, these brethren who are partaking yes. in this project here, Lord God, I pray that you will continue, Lord, to let us have a fellowship with them that is very close and to be responsive to their needs. Now, Master, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See, yeah, see, I, 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 I knew you. I'm shouting, but I ain't been in trouble in a long, 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 long. You must have been doing something right, cuz. Then I got God in my life. Who? God. Who? G O D. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. See, why? Tell me more about that. Now, see. Everybody going in jail now. Everybody going in jail. So you better some watch of, out. Some of, some of us listen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't want that's, to that's go That's why the word says one man plants, another man waters, and God gives an increase. <laughs> I remember you now. Go on, do. Hey, good to good see you, Sean, man. We're going to be getting together. Okay? We're going to be getting together. Sure. I love you like a brother. He wants to get out there on the ground level with the people, and to mingle with the people. And, and to share Christ, you know, uh, even to the point of not being afraid to embrace. Him.